Hallelujah. Before we start, I'd like to thank and invite everyone listening to the weekly message that the written portion of the weekly message are available on our church website and also on podcast platforms from Apple and Google so that you can read and also follow along and look up the Bible verses mentioned in the weekly message. You may have to hear the weekly message repeatedly more than once in order to fully understand the Word of God. That's perfectly fine. I've done it, and I still do it, listening to the messages recorded by my mentor pastor. Kindly encourage you, dear listener, to try it with all other episodes uploaded on our church website at wgmi.org and also on Apple Podcast and Google Podcast. Okay, let us begin with the meditation of the week from Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him, and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him, and show him my salvation. Amen. This week's word title is God Judges the Hypocrites Who Do Not Repent. Uh, the main message comes from Jeremiah 13.23. It's just one verse. I'll go ahead and read it. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? or the leopard his spots. Then may ye also do good, that are accustomed to do evil. When God spoke to the Israelites who worshipped idols and did evil before God, God said that they can never do good, just as the black skin of African Ethiopians cannot be changed, and the black spots of leopard cannot be changed. What this means is that they're Good works are all hypocrisy. In other words, all of them are hypocrites. God spoke through the prophet Jeremiah about the heart of man. In Jeremiah 17, verse 9 and 10, he said, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. God hates hypocrites and spoke about them many times, saying he will judge them. Hypocrites shall not come before him, according to Job thirteen sixteen, And the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate, 
Job 15.34. And also the joy of hypocrites is only for a moment. Job 20, verse 5. He also says that a hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbors. Proverbs 11, verse 9. For what is the hope of the hypocrite, though he hath gained, when God takes away his soul? According to Job 27, verse 8. Jesus also spoke of the hypocrites. Uh, first in Matthew 6, verse 2. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, uh, alms means charity, gift, or donations to the needy, or needy and poor. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Uh, and then verse 5, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Moreover, verse 16, Moreover, when ye feast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So if you look back to verse 2, 5, and 16, which I just read, all the scenes of hypocrites, right? Basically, don't make a scene about it, what you're doing. If you're going to give charity, do it quietly. You know, don't, don't make a scene. Oh, I give this much. Verse 5, don't pray to be shown among the public. You know, that's you picking up the praises. You know, you're not honoring God. You're anybody seen like a footage or been to Israel for that matter, or seen the footage of the, the wall they pray on where all the rabbis, all the Jewish people, you know, you, you see them like hitting their head, head against the wall, praying out in the public. You know, it's making a scene. Um, Jesus said so in the following verse, in verse 6, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to, the, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. It's a good practice. It's a quiet room, basically. Don't pray to be praised among the public. You know, don't make a scene about it. And then, finally, verse 16. When you fast, sure, you get hungry, right? But don't make it look like you're suffering through the fasting. Okay, uh, back to the main message. Jesus also spoke to the hypocritical religious leaders at that time. Matthew 16, verse 3. And in the morning it will be foul weather for weather today, for the sky is red and low ring. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? Second verse, uh, 23, 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. And lastly, 23, 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all 
uncleanness. Another word for sepulcher could be tomb, uh, sort of a burial place, burial chamber. Fancy on the outside, but dead on the inside. Jesus also spoke of the religious practices of the hypocrites. Mark 7, verse 6, Well hath Isaiah, is, uh, Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Just because you say, Lord, Lord, and Jesus, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, I love you, God. If you're not doing that from the heart, you might want to check yourself. That's a simple hypocrite. A lot of church cores could be doing that, not knowing or knowing. But they know according to a word right here, Mark 7, 6. Jesus told the hypocrites who did not realize how dirty sins were inside their heart. Mark 7, verses 20 through 23. That which cometh out of the man that defileth the man. For, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. That's all 13 sins that God doesn't like. He hates. The same Holy Spirit witnessed this using um, testimony of King Solomon back in uh, the rule of King Solomon in his days. If we turn to Proverbs 4, 23, Solomon said this, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. All 13 sins that we read earlier in Mark 7, 20 through 23, are they not? all the issues of life. Do we not have issues of life because of all the sins? Very wise man, indeed. It's a good practice to read Proverbs daily. Uh, I mentioned this in several episodes. I learned it from my mentor pastor. So today's recording is done on the 30th, 30th of July. So, for example, today would be Proverbs chapter 30. If you read Proverbs daily, so the 31st would be chapter 31, correct? Daily proverb chapters, um, you, you will learn a lot of things. Uh, I promise you. I never read the Bible until a few years ago, and a lot of the wisdom comes out of that book. Highly recommended. Every book, obviously, within the Bible. If you're first into, um, if it's your first time or fresh into reading the Bible, highly recommended. If you don't know how to start or where to start, you can start there too. Proverbs, daily, according to the chapter numbers. Simple to keep. Right, and also Psalms, 150 chapters, or 150 Psalms, if you will, in a division of 30. So, for instance, today would be 30th, right? So you do chapter 30, 60, 90, 120, and then the last Psalm, 150. If you do it daily on 30-day basis, you will cover the entire 150 psalms in a month. Do it daily. 
Okay, moving on. A young man came to Jesus and asked for eternal life. In Matthew 19, 16, this man said, Good Master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Jesus replied to him, in the next verse, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. But if thou wilt keep uh, but if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Uh, and then verse 21, he said, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. When this young man called Jesus was a good master, he did not realize that Jesus is God. So he grieved and left Jesus, for he couldn't give up his wealth for Jesus. If we turn to Matthew 6, 24, verse 24, this talks about who you're going to serve. This applies to a lot of um, young men and women, especially in America. This applied to me too. Still applies to me. Um, let, let's uh, read the verse. I'll go ahead and read it. No man can serve two masters. Matthew six twenty four. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. We talked about this earlier. Mammon means money. To uh, the modern word for money. That's why the young man couldn't give up his money. You know, you, you're not going to find God if you're wealthy and rich. You know, you can also find this verse in Luke 11. I preached to um, a co worker of mine. Older older gentleman, he works in the same building. I preached the gospel about Jesus. Um, he said he was fine. Why? Because he had money set aside. Told him, without Jesus, everybody goes to hell. That, that means you too, man. He said, he's okay. I'm okay. I said, all right. You won't be because you can't take it with you. Everybody gets judged. Whether you believed in Jesus and be saved or don't believe and be in hell without all the money that you saved up. Only Jesus Christ, the only good God, can remove the filthy sins in the heart of man with his own blood. He took away the sin of the world 2,000 years ago. Even now, the Lord Jesus asks saved Christian to follow him denying himself and taking up his own cross. Religious leaders back in times of Jesus knew the dirty sins in their heart, but they hid them and showed hypocrisy before the people. Thus, they were unable to discern the times and built up their own wrath by taking only their own wealth. Even in this last days, Satan is using his servants to devote themselves only to the ritual activities, worshiping God in vain, hiding true gospel so that they do not discern the time, being ignorant from what is going to happen in the near future. They are blinding the people to make them more hellish sons than they are. God uses his true servants to teach the seasonal word of God so that the purified bride of Christ be prepared for the day of Christ. But Satan uses his first uh, false servants to unite the churches of God with the whore church. Who is the whore church? The Catholic church. 
throwing them into the Great Tribulation and then ultimately to be cast into the Lake of Fire by the Antichrist. Long time ago, Satan must have planned a pandemic like the COVID-19 to complete the mark of the beast that the Antichrist will use to rule the entire world in the near future. For almost all churches are still not discerning the times. Apostle John testified of what shall happen to them who receive the mark of the beast made by the Antichrist in the near future during the Great Tribulation. His testimony is this, according to Revelation 16, verse 2, And the first went, and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Jesus spoke of the blessings of the faithful servants who discerned the time and prepare for it, and of the judgments of hypocritical servants. According to Matthew 24, 44 through 51, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, all sins being washed away by his blood, and all born-again Christians who have received the Holy Spirit are the good ones, not the hypocrites. They shall bear the good fruit of the Holy Spirit, which are not hypocritical, such as love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. And lastly, Ephesians 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your word today. May your word of truth, the word of life, the word of light, reach unto each and every one listening this message. I pray for the young generation, especially, Lord, that during this pandemic, they study and search the scriptures to find and meet you to overcome the wickedness of the world that is spiraling into, into chaos. May the Holy Spirit anoint each and every hopeless young men and women listening to today's message. Gain wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and discretion. Let them hope in you, Lord. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, name we pray. Amen. <laughs>